Over 150 years ago, French voyageurs called this river La Rivière du Nord. Today, we know it as the Derwent River. Up this river came the first free men of the colony in 1805. The country they beheld from the river was still virgin bush a wild, untamed land, which had never known the plough or the axe. But the valley has changed. Its charm, beauty and sunshine attract visitors from all parts of Australia. Every bend of the river offers them a new delightful sight. A pleasant surprise. A glorious view. The river is a popular place for cruising or rowing in the deep glides that run between wide banks. Canoeing too has its followers, where the water makes a lusty descent through the rapids. In the quieter places, where the river runs silently beneath the trees, anglers lure the trout from their dark weed beds. It's an old and practiced art, but on the banks of the Derwent it seems just a little easier, and the fish just a little fatter. A half dozen trout is not uncommon for the morning's catch, and big ones at that, all within sight of the various township. The town of New Norfolk stands on the banks of the river. Quaint, quiet, it is one of the oldest settlements in the island. It was founded in 1807 by migrants from Norfolk Island. So New Norfolk grew and became the civic and administrative center of the valley. The early settlers of the Derwent were religious men, men who tackled the wilderness with the plough, the axe, the Bible or the rosary. They professed different religions and each religion erected its own place of worship. The Catholic settlers built this charming Gothic church in 1886. St. Matthew's, the oldest church in Tasmania, was erected by the Anglicans in 1823. The Methodists too have their church here. Still today it retains the original pews of cedarwood, each with its own door. But preaching was not confined to the church. In the early days, the tap room of the famous Old Bush Hotel resounded to many a sermon. And it was here, a century ago, that composer William Morris wrote into his opera, The Spirit of the Valley.
this spirit remains alive today. The Colony Inn has seen the valley grow from its pioneer beginnings. It still retains the old world atmosphere that reminds one of the days of the stagecoach that passed its doors. The inn's kitchen is a real museum piece. It contains a number of delightful antiques, a source of wonder to visitors. Sunny and gay with the talk and laughter of tourists, the combined music and dining room is an example of fine taste and of an eye for decor. A steep staircase leads to the first floor where the bedroom awaits us. This room reflects the tranquility of the Victorian era which, even so far from its centre, the people of the valley could not disregard. Just as they could not disregard the serenity of the landscape that encircled their lives. The Derwent Valley is not only an historic valley, but also one of the richest farming areas in Tasmania. Agriculture is highly developed. Free from drought and flood, crops grow well and stock thrives on rich pasture land. Yes, the Derwent Valley is a vale of plenty. But the produce for which the valley is famous is hops. Used in the making of beer, 80% of Australia's hop production comes from these laden vines. Towards the end of summer, when the smell of hop blossom hangs heavily on the air, the harvesting begins. It attracts pickers from far and wide, the old hoppers and the young people on a working holiday. The oast houses where the hops are dried are typical features of the Derwent Valley. And the oldest standing oast house is at Bushy Park near New Norfolk. It was built by English migrant William Shoebridge in 1867. Being a religious man, Mr. Shoebridge attached biblical inscriptions to the outside walls. Time and progress have not changed the oast houses for similar ones were built in England centuries ago. But it's the river that holds and captivates the eye, twisting and turning along the valley, reflecting in its placid surface the burnished hues of autumn. And in the springtime, golden leaves are replaced by a host of blossoms. For in this valley, every growing thing seems to surround itself with a garland of colour. The oast houses, the hop fields, and the placid pastoral atmosphere of the countryside have earned the Derwent Valley the name This Other England. A valley where the old and the new, history and progress, mingle with pleasant harmony. <laughs>